Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with stupid boxed sets, of which there is no end. And today, we're going to be talking about Eric Kleiber boxes, the endless procession of Eric Kleiber boxes. Now, I, 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 Eric Kleiber was incredibly, incredibly famous, and his discography was rather small, rather like his more famous son, Carlos Kleiber, whose discography was also rather small. In Eric's case, I think it was a question more or less of opportunity, not so much of desire or panic as it was with Carlos. But Eric Kleiber's legacy, mostly on DECA, has been exploited up and down and sideways and backwards and upside down since time immemorial. And I have some examples here of things that we bought that now we probably don't know what to do with. Because, let's let's just be clear, the complete Eric Kleiber Decca, there's also a Polydor early music, early, early recordings, very early recordings on Deutsche Grammophone set. But on Decca, it is out. It's out and it has... Um, I, I, well, like I think 15 discs or something like that. I have it sitting over there in a pile. I don't feel like digging it out, but I also have the other stuff. So, I mean, that I dug out. Let's take a look. In the beginning, in the beginning, well, not even the beginning. We're just talking about the CD era. There was this. Now, this is a six disc set that contains just about all of his Decca recordings. This is 1949 to 1955. There is some, a little bit of earlier stuff. Or there is some, some, well, maybe there's nothing later, I think, because he was dead, but, you know, or close to that, but it doesn't matter. What you get is uh, the Beethoven Eroica and Symphony Number no. 7, and then you get Beethoven 5 and 6, and then you get the other Eroica, because he did one in Vienna and one with the Concertgebouw and the Weber First Symphony, and then you get the Ninth, and then we have uh, another Pastoral Symphony. There's another one of those um, with the London Phil and Mozart's 40th, and then Mozart Four German Dances, Symphony 39, and the Schubert Nine. So that's what's in here, and wasn't that nice? If you got this, you would be very happy until this showed up. Now, this one has 12 CDs in it. And the reason it has 12 CDs is because it has the complete Rosen Cavalier and the Marriage of Figaro, his two studio opera recordings, which are marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. I mean, first rate, terrific. So yeah, here we go. So here's other box. So now we have these, all right? Otherwise, this has all the same stuff as this. Got it? So now we've got two. Then the complete Eric Kleiber came out. What was the difference between that, which I'm not even going to bother showing, it's around, you can take a look at it, and this, the only difference is that the newer complete Eric Kleiber includes all the stuff that was in here, plus his two Tchaikovsky symphonies with the Paris Conservatoire Orchestra. Tchaikovsky's four and six. And then aside from those, you get Dvorak's Carnival Overture and, and some Handel Aria thing and a couple Strauss waltzes. That's the only difference. And so it begs the question, does it not, my friends? Why they couldn't have taken those Tchaikovsky symphonies and stuffed them in here in the first place or in here and instead of making us buy this stuff? over and over and over again. What are the years of these? You know, maybe I could actually find out and tell you. This was 2004 was this sucker. And this one came out. Oh, wait, here, there must be a date down here, right? Uh, 2015 was this one. And then the complete Kleiber was just the past couple of years. It was the past couple of years. So they didn't even wait five, six years before doing it all over again and finally getting all of the stuff. Now, there is a lot more Kleiber. There, there are broadcasts and pirates and, you know, all kinds of all kinds of live recordings and things. But, I mean, we're talking about his official discography for DECA. And it, it, it's not so much, right? We're talking 15 CDs right, or something like that, yes? 
and yeah, 15 CDs all told or 14 CDs. And you could have done it that way in the first place. It's not like, I mean, I get it sometimes where you just want to issue separate boxes. You know, someone does Beethoven, somebody does Strauss, somebody does Tchaikovsky. Okay, fine. Or, you know, the, the greatest hits of or the best of because you, you don't want to release a 50 CD box, um, which nobody's going to buy or you think has a very limited market or whatever. Anyway, but this was a guy whose entire discography fits in the palm of your hand. And it would have been so easy just to put it together correctly the first time and then sell it. Sell it because the guy has the name. He has the reputation. You could have kept it in print indefinitely. You could have just sold it and sold it and sold it. It wouldn't have made that much of a difference. The difference between 12 CDs and 14 CDs, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant in here. The reason the operas weren't in here is because they were available separately. I mean, they were available. They were famous, famous recordings. I mean, that Don G, I mean, Don Giovanni, the, uh, the Figaro and, and the Rosen Company are, are two of the most famous opera recordings out there from that wonderful Viennese ensemble cast from, you know, the post-war period, the 1950s. I mean, they're, they're great performances. And so they, they stayed in print. So all the other stuff got shoved into here. There was a certain logic to it at one point. But that logic ended pretty quickly um, as soon as they decided to do Kleiber again and give us this thing. And so, it, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. It does not, my friends. It's annoying. It's so annoying. But that's what they did. And so this gets my nomination for stupid box sets. They just keep coming. And we're going to keep on listening because that's what we do. Take care.